So yes, we are now looking at uh, Linux Mint, not because it's any better than Ubuntu, but simply because it's another desktop OS, and it's a rather popular one, just like Ubuntu is. So today we're going to go ahead and install um, PyHole. It's one of the better tools when it comes to blocking adware on your network, and can be used both on a single machine or on a multi-machine environment if you're using it as the primary DNS for your network. So what we're going to do is go ahead and here and do a curl command, and we're going to do a HTTPS uh, colon slash slash install dot pi hole, well, pi hyphen hole net, and then we're going to pipe that to the bash. So basically when the script gets downloaded, it's then going to run in the bash terminal. So don't worry if you can't follow along with what I just said, it should be appearing on the screen right about now. And we're also then going to run through the installer. Now the installer goes through several steps, one of which is checking permissions, uh, caches, and if you have the prerequisites. Assuming all is good, you're going to see the installer moving on to the next steps. Now shortly after this runs, you're going to get a series of configuration questions. But just before the configuration questions, you're going to get a couple of recommendations. One of the things is things like telling you, hey, would you like to donate? And B, uh, do you have a static IP because it's a recommended thing? This is mostly because if your DNS settings get set to this and then change, then you're going to end up fiddling around. The next thing you're going to get asked is what public IPs, and you've got the option for putting custom ones or going with one of the presets for the DNS. And after that, you get the blacklist requests. Would you like to select them? I go with all of them, which is pretty much the default anyway. And just next, next, my way through the menus. As you can see, there's not a lot of options really to configure for most of us, because frankly, it's, it's perfectly good and fine. The only thing that I will say that comes up of interest here is the privacy policy, and that's entirely down to you. Personally, I don't mind giving the feedback. It's a great product. Um, others of you might want to go with the anonymous mode so that you don't provide information. Again, it's down to you. I won't judge. Now, after that's done, we're just going to go ahead and finish the installation of the various packages. And then the all important part at the end, you're going to get it set up on a local port to your machine, which we just did the install for, which is totally okay. But the other part of it is it's going to randomly generate an admin password. Now, obviously, this password can be changed, but please, please make note of it or save it. Because once you have logged in, you're probably going to forget what it is because it's completely random. So if you like this from the point of view of what I'm doing, um, you can also follow and do very similar steps to what I've just done. Because what you'll see here is I've got the admin link and the password, and I left this open deliberately. Go over to the browser first, and you do have the ability to actually open the link directly from the bash terminal. So I can just right click on this, open the link, and that will fire up a browser session. In this case, the default browser happens to be Firefox. I can then go and hit login and I can enter the password. So here I have it still open, so there's no chance for me to forget it or otherwise um, make a mistake. Because if you do at this point, it's kind of tricky in terms of you gotta go back and install and then try again, which is frankly painful. I have made that mistake myself, therefore I'm not gonna judge anyone who makes that mistake too. Um, and frankly, at this point, you can go ahead and just use it on this machine. Um, it actually, totally works out of the box in this respect. Everything I browse to after this point on this machine is gonna have the ad blocking protection already there. For other machines, you will need to point it to this one in order to get that effect. And that's it, you're set up on the Linux Mint.